Good afternoon. Can you hear me okay over there? Yeah? Thank you. Thank you. You want to play tonight? Yeah. My name is Tony. I attend Grace Community Church in the San Fernando Valley. I'm here with friends from as far away as Nova Scotia to Portland, Oregon. We're here today to share with you the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're not here to call anybody names. We know there are people who will come on campus to do that. We're not going to do that to you. Jesus taught us in his word that we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. So we're not going to be rude to you. We're not going to call you names. We're not going to condemn you in any way. But we will tell you the truth. Because it is the truth that will set you free. And if there's anyone here who does not believe in absolute truth, I would love to talk to you. I would love for you to come and express to me how you absolutely know that there is no such thing as absolute truth. Would love to talk to you about that. Down the hill, at the base of uh, Bruin Walk, there's a campaign called 7,000 in solidarity, and it is to join the fight to end sexual assault. Join the fight to end sexual assault. They have an area set up with banners and information and pictures. And one of the pictures one of the pictures says that 95% of men know sexual assault is wrong. The statistic that they're claiming is that 95% of men know that sexual assault is wrong. I believe that number is inaccurate. I do not believe that 95% of men know that sexual assault is wrong. I believe that number is inaccurate. And I would like to ask you, anybody who would like to answer, what you believe is the correct percentage. Down at the end of Bruin Walk, there's a picture that says that 95% of men know that sexual assault is wrong. Do you believe that number is accurate? Is it too high? Is it too low? My friends, the correct answer is 100%. It is not 95% of men who know sexual assault is wrong. It is 100%. There's not a man alive. There's not a young or old man walking on this campus that does not know that sexual assault is wrong. One of the... Uh, one of the pictures, and there are several down there. One of the pictures says, it's a, it's a picture of a woman lying down, surrounded by bottles of alcohol, bottles of liquor. And it says, I'm not asking for it. I'm only an easy target if you're thinking like a rapist. Kind of like these two young men walking by here. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, the sign says, I'm not asking for it. I'm only an easy target if you're thinking like a rapist. 100% of the men on this campus know that sexual assault 
is wrong. And 100% of the men on this campus, at one time or another, maybe even now, has thought like a rapist. Has thought like a rapist. Jesus had this to say. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. When I ask young men on college campuses if they've ever looked at a woman and had a lustful thought, ever looked at a woman and had a sexual thought, they joke. And they joke with the young women they're walking with. And they show themselves to be a rapist at heart. That's right, you young men who are scoffing and laughing at the idea of looking at a woman and lusting after her, looking at that as a good thing, you are a rapist at heart. You probably never thought of it that way. But that's how God sees you. Every time you glance and have a sexual thought, every time you go onto your computer and indulge in pornography, every time you go to an R or X-rated movie and enjoy the entertainment of women disrobing and being assaulted and being treated like dirt, you are acting like a rapist. And God hates, God hates the rapist. God does not only hate rape, he hates the rapist. It's not only the man who physically assaults a woman and forces her to have sex with him that God hates. But it's the man who rapes in his mind. That's who God hates. So the question for you is, man or woman, have you ever looked at another human being who is not your spouse? And God only recognizes marriage between one man and one woman for life. It is true. Tell me why you believe it's not true. You, yes, you do. You do believe in God. You simply suppress that truth by your unrighteousness because you love your sin more than the God you know exists. And the wicked flee when no one pursues. The young man, as he was running by, said, hey, none of this matters. I don't believe in God. It's not true. There are no atheists. There are no skeptics. There are no agnostics. There are only sinful people who suppress the truth they know about God because they love themselves and they love their sin more than than the God they know it exists. Romans chapter 1, beginning in verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness 
and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made. So they are without excuse, for although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Every man within the sound of my voice knows it's wrong to rape women in their mind. Because God has given them a conscience. You know right from wrong, not because of where you went to school, not because of where you grew up, not because of who your parents were. You know right from wrong because God has written his law on your heart. You know it's wrong to lie because God is truth. You know it's wrong to steal, to harbor bitterness or resentment in your heart. You know it's wrong to hate another human being because God is love. You know it's wrong to take the name of the God who created you in vain because you know God is holy and young men you know it's wrong to rape women in your mind with the pornography you look at and the way you ogle women as they walk by you know that's wrong because God is faithful And as the Word of God makes clear, we are all without excuse. None of us will stand before God and be able to claim either innocence or ignorance of violating His law. Because He's given us a conscience. Because His law is written on our heart. And because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And because God is good, and my friends, that is the most fearful thing, the reality that God is good, the most fearful characteristic of God is His goodness. Because of His perfect goodness, He must punish sin. The punishment that God has ascribed for sin is eternity in hell. I don't want that for you. I don't want anyone to perish in their sin. But the reality is God is good. And He will not turn a blind eye to evil. And the soul that sins shall die. And that same God who is angry with the wicked every day. That same God whose wrath abides upon the ungodly. That same God who will judge the world in righteousness is the same God who is loving, merciful, gracious, and kind. And he showed that great love 2,000 years ago when God the Father sent his Son to earth 
in the person of Jesus Christ. Fully God and fully man and without sin. He was born of a virgin, just as the prophet Isaiah declared 700 years before Jesus' birth. And unlike you and me, he lived a perfect, sinless life. He never once violated the law of God in thought, word, or deed. He could not, because he was, and he is, and he always will be, the sinless Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. He lived a perfect life for some 33 years that you and I cannot live for 33 seconds. And then he voluntarily went to the cross. He suffered and died a horrific bloody death he did not deserve to take upon himself the punishment you and I rightly deserve for our sins against God. And then three days later, unlike Mohammed, unlike Buddha, unlike the gods of Mormonism, unlike the gods of Catholicism, unlike the gods of the Jehovah's Witnesses, Jesus Christ rose from the grave. And he is alive today. And he will return at a time of the Father's choosing. What God commands of you is the same thing he commands of me and all people everywhere. And that's that we repent. That we turn from raping women in our mind. And we turn from blaspheming the God who created us, that we turn from loving ourself, loving our sin, and by faith turn to God and receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. For only God can forgive the young man on this campus who rapes women in his mind. Only Jesus Christ, who shed his innocent blood on the cross, can pay the penalty that the rapists on the UCLA campus deserve to pay. When he shed his innocent blood on the cross. And many of you laugh, many of you scoff, and the gospel is not good news to you. That is because the wrath of God abides on you at this moment. You come to a fine school like this, and you're told you're a free thinker. You're told that you're independent and autonomous, and you're lied to. You're not autonomous. You're not independent. You are owned by the God who created you. Whether you submit to his lordship or whether you live in wanton rebellion, Jesus Christ is Lord over you. You do not make him Lord. He has always been Lord, and He owns you as He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And He will do with you what will bring Him the most glory. Whether it's sending you to hell for all eternity, or granting you the gift of eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. You see, my friends, Jesus does not need your acceptance. You need His. 
Jesus is not in yonder heaven with a hole in his heart that only you can fill. He's not shedding tears because you reject him. In fact, if you die in your sin, the angels will rejoice as God condemns you to hell for all eternity. But to those whom God loves, to those whom God in His sovereignty chooses to extend grace and mercy and life to, they will be adopted into His family through faith in Jesus Christ, the Lord. Maybe you've heard in church that we are all children of God. It's not true. We were all created in the image of God. Each and every one of us are image bearers of our Creator. But only those God adopts into His beloved family through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ, are called children of God. Everyone else is a child of wrath. And you will one day stand before the God you know exists. Again, there are no atheists. There are no skeptics. There are no agnostics. There are only proud-hearted people who suppress the truth they know about God so that they can love their sin. But God can take your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And if God does that amazing, gracious, loving work in your life, you'll begin to love the things that God loves. You'll begin to hate the things that God hates. And you will no longer presume upon His forgiveness because you have deemed yourself worthy. But you will have assurance. You will have assurance of that forgiveness. Not on the basis of anything you have done in righteousness, but based on God's mercy. So come to your senses. Turn to Christ and live. Turn to Christ and live. Do not harden your hearts this day. Turn to Christ and live. 